now we're back we're back hi hello um we're stockpiling up some eps before our imminent departure mm-hmm. so we're gonna do another love line yeah for all our lovely another love line EP. um any orders of business before we um before we begin i would like to uh say get well bernie yeah who suffered a heart attack and his uh, campaign was cool and a uh, cool mm-hmm. enough to reveal that information to right his uh fans and constituents unlike hillary praying for you bernie yeah well, um that's because hillary clinton why are you what? You're wrestling with the mic oh sorry <laughs> i was just moving the, oh it makes it just makes a sound oops it's okay <laughs> um i was just adjusting <laughs> the cap the phone all, cover just, it's fine <laughs> you know me i'm a real audio file yeah, yeah i gotta get the levels just right um, well, that's because Hillary Clinton has a disease called Kuru yeah. that you get um, from cannibalizing uh, human the, flesh. The blood of the young. Yeah, because she drinks uh, blood. Um, she she has a sickness that can't be revealed. Yeah, and it's incurable. <laughs> she like sleeps upside down and also has a another sickness called being a pathological liar. So mm-hmm. there you have it. And I also wanted to give a shout out to that Thai judge who shot himself because he was uh, forced, he was pressured to enter a conviction against five Muslim men, mm-hmm. probably because they're Muslim and, you know, in the absence of any evidence. And he was like, fuck this shit. And he shot himself in the courtroom, Holy which is like the shit. real joker. That's some, that yeah, guy's cool. That's he cool stood up for what shit. he believed in. Yeah that rocks and i hope he pulls through we're praying for you that's the best way to go i'm telling i'm saying like detonating the vest yeah making some kind of statement shooting yourself on tv <laughs> yeah people were like freaking out watch out for the next live show people were freaking out about the joker and then a guy in thailand actually took a political stance anyway mm-hmm. we can jump into the questions yeah that's all i had to say all right um let's do you want to do the first one yeah sure um this one's from ava i guess we can say first names i wouldn't say that okay this one's from a we'll say (laughs) we'll say the first initial um hi ladies i'm currently engaged to my boyfriend of six years he's not my type physically but i fell in love with him because he's really simple kind and caring i've never cheated but i've had intense feelings for other men one of who is currently my frenemy's boyfriend Ooh. we've messaged each other here and there but nothing more my question is how do you overcome the seething jealousy i have and come to terms with the bet i've made for myself thanks for your help dasha hmm um <laughs> i don't know what do you think anna it sounds like i don't know well i guess i'd want sometimes you people submit questions and you know give me enough information it sounds like you're not really in love with your with it your sounds partner. like you're settling because you're scared that you're not going to find his qualities simplicity kindness caring in yeah. another man who who more closely matches your physical criteria yeah and you probably will continue to you probably will cheat on him inevitably or sabotage the relationship in other ways right you will continue to have intense crushes on other men um including your frenemy's boyfriend um two things also here uh i understand it's our fault and we bring this upon ourselves because we say keep the question short because in the past we've received such rambling novellas of like solipsism but we do need some data there's a big difference. So it, it would be interesting to know how old she is because yes. if she's on the younger side, then I say, get out of, get there. out, get out of there. You have a lot of time, but if you're older, it makes sense to lock it down, to lock it down. Mm-hmm. If you find, if you've like found a man who's I mean, like good to you, even if you're older, I don't know. Life well, is long. It is. It depends on whether you want to have children, like all these mitigating right. factors. Right, right, right. I mean, if you're like 33, 34 and you don't want to have kids, then by all means, go out on your own yeah um the other thing is i I think that she's particularly attracted to the frenemy's boyfriend because he's her frenemy's boyfriend it's not that he's so hot and wonderful on his own account right that's Um, right sister (laughs) and i don't know i think that life is long truly my advice would be to prey on it um <laughs> ask god for a sign yeah ask god for a sign and 
you'll in, be able to intuit what's right. This will also be my answer to all of the questions. Yeah, yeah, from now on. <laughs> is uh, let Jesus take the wheel. Yeah, <laughs> I remember that means. Because God's plan works and your plan doesn't. Yeah, and ask yourself, you know, uh huh. Is he not your physical type, but cute nonetheless? Or do you find him physically repulsive? Because those are two she different things. She clearly doesn't find him repulsive. She likes him enough she to... She likes him enough to stay up in that relationship. Yeah. My advice would just be, yeah, to get a little more of a spine and just cut the cord. Yeah. And my last piece of advice also is if you do choose to break up with him or to leave the relationship, don't do it in a messy way that hurts his feelings because he doesn't deserve it. Mm-hmm. And just be straight up. Merciful. And merciful and get out of there. Um, should we do the next one? Hey, ladies. So the couple of my friend group came out as being in a bisexual open relationship. Their only rule is that they cannot sleep with anyone in our inner circle. While the guy has been hitting on the gay of our group and has been trying to sleep with him. I really want to tell his girlfriend, who is one of my best friends, since he is breaking the rules and therefore being unfaithful to her. Should I tell her? Um no no this mm, no. i think you can sit back and relax and watch this drama unfold and mm-hmm. this guy undo himself totally never underestimate the and this rule about your inner circle is a little i don't know it seems a little nonsensical to me i'm well this is this is actually like kind of a complicated question i'm really on the fence about people telling their close friends about cheating Mm -hmm. because a lot of times it's kind of a very narcissistic self-congratulatory thing yeah like i I want the points for telling you yeah Yeah. but wouldn't you want to know i I personally wouldn't want to know if my boyfriend was cheating on me as long listen i I would want to know if other people knew yeah that that's a big mitigating factor too if like my friends knew he was cheating on me i would want them to tell me but if no one knew i would rather not know yeah so it sounds like it sounds like though that the friend group uh, in the friend group everybody but the the girl who's dating the guy knows that he's hitting on the gay of the yeah group right Uh uh-huh it seems like this coming out in a bisexual open relationship was a big pretense for this guy to hit on the gay guy in the group yeah exactly and like these little rules they're making up i don't think will be beneficial for their bisexual open relationship my instinct is to like sit back and and just like take it easy let it unfold. yeah it sounds like a fucking mess it's not your responsibility to like litigate the rules the arbitrary rules they've established in their relationship yeah um and more will be revealed yeah and look if she if your best friend finds out and says like hey you were my friend and you didn't tell me be like i didn't know play dumb yeah i didn't know don't insert yourself into and this. he's hitting on this person you know like he hasn't cheated yet or i guess it's not it wouldn't even be cheating he hasn't formally he hasn't broken some the line kind of yet. rule yet so i don't know i would at least wait and see what happens yeah don't before do anything we uh, jump the shark okay here's one from mc are we doing the aging question yeah Hi, context. Ever since graduating high school, I've started to really pay attention to my and other people's age. It's gotten to the point where I can't watch a movie without compulsively looking up how old every single actor is. I've always had a fear of aging, been wearing sunscreen every day since 14, but it's getting worse as I get older and I feel more alienated from young people and youth culture. I'm still in my 20s, so it's not like I'm actually old, but I can't help but feel jealous of people in their late teens and early 20s question how do you deal with aging the inevitability of fading looks and resentment toward younger people Mm. hugs and kisses spanish person (laughs) um what do you think anna i mean it's just gotta kind of get out there's nothing to really there's nothing it's inevitable time moves forward on youth is coveted because it's transient exactly it's like a fact of life and also i i really take it's umbrage ephemeral. Uh-huh. it's ephemeral i take umbrage with this very actually american idea that um aging necessarily means waning looks like look at carmen del orifice or carmen of the orifice um <laughs> she's a model who's in her 70s or 80s she looks better now than when she did when she was 20 or 30 it really depends on the person you can age gracefully you can age gracefully it sounds like you're already you're wearing sunscreen yeah you're doing the right things i personally i think i look better than i did when i was in my early 20s definitely yeah i I don't really think i started getting hot until i was like 
24 25 you know yeah because when you're that young you don't know what to do with yourself you just make bad fashion choices don't really invest yeah. in skincare i didn't don't exercise, exercise. yes yeah. i like just sort of thought that i i was like skinny fat through my late teens too because i was like hormonally imbalanced and like experimenting with different birth controls and stuff yeah and just horny and don't be jealous of, of teens for sure because yeah because what, what they don't this, even know anything yeah and what this person is jealous of is the extremely tiny sliver of genetically one percenter teens mm-hmm. who are incredibly hot and look like actors on euphoria like the teens um who hang out outside of juilliard <laughs> yeah but like in reality most teens are like disgusting pimply sacks of hormones yeah with like bowl haircuts and like there's nothing to baggy be ugly clothing because they're all going to get older anyway yeah you know i uh yeah i can't relate i don't have the like seething jealousy of people younger than me i'm yeah. so happy that i'm older me too we don't really have aging fears up on this podcast yeah i think but maybe we look, i mean we look pretty good yeah, i moisturize for- a lot I don't even moisturize, but I've looked 36 since I was right. 16. So right. there's, it's not really going to get much worse. Like, how, how old do you think I look, Anna? You look younger than your age. How old? <laughs> mm, let's say 24, 25. Mm-hmm. You think I could pass for 22? I think like you could probably accurately, convincingly play like a late teen on uh, in the movies. You could. I don't you know. could pull it off. I go on out for late teen stuff sometimes, but it's just the my voice and everything. It's your voice and your demeanor. I'm not like I'm not. I'm so clearly not a teen. Well, yeah, but I would like. I hope I lose my virginity <laughs> this summer. Like no one's buying. Yeah, I that. hope I lose my virginity and try drugs for the first <laughs> time. <laughs> yeah, man, hang time. Exactly. But yeah, we, I don't think we're aging. I don't have any anxiety about aging because the thing also about it, you as you old, get older, you get hornier. Sm- well, sometimes, but you get like not necessarily smarter, but you get like wisdom and experience, and that's that's something I didn't realize because when I was younger, it wasn't an anxiety, but I did like look at people who were like. I'll be like, oh my god, she's fucking thirty, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and um, now that you're, I'm in, I'm nearing my thirties. I'm kind of like, oh no, this is great, because you have so much more. All that stuff that happens in between being twenty-two and thirty counts for you something. You have so much more power and wisdom and discipline and wherewithal and god. like accumulated experience. It's which is sexy. It's sexy and cool. Now, I don't envy the really old because I like... Actually aging. That, I know that sucks. Yes. I remember being 23 and, you know, jump, like leaping up from a hangover and being, eh, no problem. And now it's like a day of like groaning convalescence mm-hmm. and you start to feel the physical effects of aging. So I can only imagine what it feels like at 50 or 60 when you, right. when you suffer what is for us a minor ailment. Yeah, and your bones get all brittle. But and actually, it's like harder for you to like move through the world yeah, and stuff. But what people should really be scared of is not aging, because believe me, there's nothing to envy about people in their late teens and early twenties, except for maybe their like transient eph- ephemeral beauty, mm-hmm. um, which you can enjoy too if you're a pedophile. I'm just <laughs> kidding. You people really have to watch their weight gain. That's the biggest factor the weight gain. in. Uh, looking and feeling good as you age yes definitely and that's not my like weird eating disorder body shaming bullshit it's like a fact of life yeah if you can stay thin through your 40s and 50s you're fine you're golden we're all gonna die anyway and i'm gonna say something i'm gonna give some actually good advice now (laughs) which is like when you look at pictures of yourself when you're younger you know and sometimes i do and i'm like oh i was so cute like oh you know Mm -hmm. and then just keep it in perspective that would be my advice is like until you're truly old you're always like the youngest you're always the youngest you're gonna gonna be be. yeah that's really so (laughs) so and in like five years time you'll look back on you know 
whatever age you are now and be like, wow, I was so young. I was so cute. I was so cute and young. So you're always kind of not not the cutest, but you're the youngest you're always going to be. But aging is inevitable. So just keep it in perspective. And when you're truly fucking old, then you can like be bummed about it. But you'll have a whole lived a whole life, you know. And you'll have children and grandchildren. <laughs> we'll all be underwater. Um, also, another thing is that you might want to get checked out for OCD if you're like compulsively looking up the age of every single actor you come across in a movie because yeah. that's not normal. But keep wearing sunscreen, definitely. Yeah, good for you. Next question. Dear Red Scare Loveline, a guy I was friends with and then sleeping with earlier in the year who I haven't spoken to in months texted me, I wonder how you are. I want to know what, specifically and separately, both of you would text back. Context is that he's hot and a narcissist. Thanks. Ooh. Specifically and separately. I love to get a, I'd love to get a wonder how you are kind of text. Hmm. I, I, well, I want to say I wouldn't respond right away, but I would for sure respond right away. But I wonder what I would say. Ugh, horny. <laughs> How are you? I would just send him like a Joker gif. No, <laughs> yeah. just kidding. Send him that gif of Trump looking shocked and then like waggling his eyebrows around, because <laughs> um, that always brightens my day. I wonder how you are. Um, what would you say, Anna? I wouldn't say anything. I just wouldn't respond. It's so what obvious. What if you want to fuck? Well. It doesn't does it sound like she wants to fuck if she wants if she just wanted to fuck she wouldn't be asking this question she said he's hot well yeah but she wants something more than fucking because if she was just trying to fuck she just respond to him in a convenient and expedient way like hey how are you mm-hmm. and then they would consort to fuck i think this guy's going down the rolodex and she's a little bit more invested in him than he is in her mm-hmm. and by the way that's another thing that i I, I must say men are all disgusting and shameless and they'll fuck any number of women and they'll fuck friends and sisters and they are up in the DMS and always going down the Rolodex and women need to know that. Wow. Anna. Cause they're shameless. Damn. That's tough. That's a tough pill to swallow. It is. Personally. Yeah. But, but they all, <laughs> they're all dirty. I don't, I don't like to hear that. And I love them for it. Yeah. I'm just going to be a full lesbian. I think, um, I, you know, this is another one where like, how are you? You know, how actually, like, how are you actually? And what do you want? Yeah. Because me, okay. If I got this text, one avenue that I could do after I take my decide my path tincture, Mm -hmm. I would, um, (laughs) I would say like, I'm really um, depressed and suicidal that's good so then he's like oh my god no what's wrong (laughs) then i'm like i just you know it's so hard to go on whatever i would have some i would do some kind of um dramatic maybe i'm gonna kill myself thing performance yeah yeah. to get um the hit to get him to feel bad for me which is one of you know my favorite ways to my favorite kind of male attention one of your favorite pages in the playbook yeah yeah and then but also kind of suicidal but um horny you know yeah just kind of like god i don't know i've just been masturbating and crying (laughs) well dasha that's the thing it's like if you want to fuck the guy then do something suicidally horny Mm -hmm. and if you think he's full of shit and don't really want to fuck him you just don't respond respond. and he'll want you more if you don't respond i'm not very good at that um next question yes where are we from m from m Amrata. Um, <laughs> my boyfriend, my husband is a cook. What? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> I've been hooking up with this very hot, very rich girl whenever her jet setting brings her to my city. Despite flying all over the globe, she firmly believes that the earth is flat. Nobody ever told her she's retarded for obvious reasons. We have really hot sex, interests in common, and always have a great time together, but I can't get over the flat earther thing. She's also anti-vax and a huge bitch to service workers. Excuse me. Should I end the relationship and find someone else who's not retarded? I feel like I'm taking advantage of a disabled person. Bro, there is no relationship. You're not in a relationship, <laughs> There's honey. no relationship. Uh, <laughs> and bro, uh, mm-hmm. who cares if she's a flat earther and 
anti-vaxxer if the pussy's tight that's the right. bigger problem woof, woof, woof. <laughs> yeah. the on. bigger problem is that she's a bitch to service workers that's which means bigger. she has a shabby character yeah so if you're gonna get rid of her get rid of her for being a classist cunt and not for being a, a retard. retard it's okay yeah for sure but you're not in a relationship so <laughs> you cares? don't have to worry about it you yeah. can kind of play it by ear i'm sure she's not that invested in uh in you she has a private jet and like a five-star hotel yeah (laughs) she doesn't give a shit she's slowly rounding the curvature of the globe (laughs) sailing on the fumes of her privilege and you're like worried about your quote relationship that doesn't exist and by the way if you should find another girlfriend you don't even have to be that conscientious about dipping out of this non-relationship it's literally fine just congrats on the pussy yeah you know i would love to get some flat earth pussy (laughs) i'm serious maybe i don't need enough dumb people people are hot i like would love to ride someone's dick and tell them they're stupid actually like slap them around like idiot (laughs) i'm an idiot um but what was i saying oh the flat earther thing yeah just don't bring it up just gloss over it yeah it's not a big deal i've fucked stupid people before and you just say like oh yeah totally (laughs) amazing (laughs) whatever man that's so smart yeah Mm -hmm. a guy Um, that i was sleeping with once asked me what neoliberalism was damn yeah and i was like oh my god it's just like you know like an economic system (laughs) (laughs) and he's like yo that's cool that's some nice pillow talk right there yeah anyway this one from david yeah Oh, it's my turn. I think it's your turn. <laughs> you read the flat earther one? I did, oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. Oh, okay. Hello, girls. I never want to have children, biological or otherwise. When should I bring this up with a potential partner and how do I bring it up organically? Much love. That's a good question, honestly. Yeah. Um, cuz yeah, why you we don't need to bring it up right away because that's creepy and preemptive. But pretty early on, I would. But you can't wait too long when somebody's stacking their hopes for Not too motherhood long, but on you. Yeah, so like I'd say prior to being entering into a serious relationship, but in sort of a early on in the preliminary courtship period. I don't know. I that feels like a conversation people have. You yeah, totally. I ask people who I don't even who I'm like maybe sleeping with or don't even necessarily consider to be like prospective serious partners. I'll just. Would like, you have do a you, kid with me? Do you? Yeah. Do you want to get me fucking pregnant? No. <laughs> no, but just like, do you ever want to have kids? You know, I mean, there's lots of anti-natalist discourse now, mm-hmm. so it's like that's an organic way to be like, huh? I I read this article about how <laughs> I read a Jacobin <laughs> article <laughs> about how you shouldn't have kids. Like, how do, do you feel about something like that? And then they know, and then then they know, and then they can make an informed decision about being with you in a serious way or not. Yeah, and I think you can bring it up in a sufficiently casual way that's not like yeah. too heavy handed. You don't like, have to like sit them down and tell them that. Yeah, you won't be filling their womb with seed. But also, I mean, I don't know. Why not? You're a man. What do you fucking care? Yeah, you just if rub someone one wants out. to get a have your baby just let them just spray your seed all over the world but you know maybe it doesn't even matter at the end of the day because he might be pleasantly surprised because he might meet a woman who's going to want to have kids with him Mm -hmm. or he's going to want to have kids with her rather like that happens all the time an open mind hon yeah it's possible Mm -hmm. i mean like not to gloat but when i met eli he told me that i was the first woman that he felt that he wanted to procreate with oh my God. because we're like incestually matched. And like before that, I don't think it had ever occurred to him because he was dating like nice girls, but girls that didn't really suit him in a way, you know, I think it's hot to tell people to get me pregnant when I, when you should have sex. absolutely, I tell that, I mean, I've said that to like literally every guy that I've had sex with. I'm like, but I, I'm do, I, I'll, I'll do this like come in me, come in me, get me fucking pregnant thing. But like, I'm not on birth control. So I'm like, don't, don't like, actually don't do, do, it, don't yeah. do it <laughs> you're just like i'm gonna say some stuff that i'm not gonna mean yeah you're just like <laughs> come to me I, baby but what I, the fuck are you doing <laughs> <laughs> but i did mean it when i called you an idiot earlier yeah okay <laughs> uh, okay next one wow we're blowing through these mm, blowing through these um mm-hmm. uh, hi anna and dasha i love when they spell my name with one n yeah 
it's okay. Okay. It, it's no it's hilarious and i love when people pronounce my name like anna anna yeah. yeah i'm like are you retarded or european um okay how can i as a young man dress well without looking like an it guy i feel for i feel like for people like myself who can't afford high-end clothes and are limited to fast fashion and mall brand, brands men's clothes are so boring basically my options are some earth tone chinos and a button-down shirt and some permutation of white and light blue also because i'm in the midwest thrift stores don't have much besides xxl harley davidson shirts and green bay packer apparel so finding unique vintage pieces ends up being too much work do you have any ideas or suggestions for me? What is your aesthetic vision for a scrub like me from America's Dairyland? I'm assuming he's straight. I think he's straight. Okay. Um. Uh. Yeah, men's clothes are boring, but that's you should embrace that. It sounds like you look fine. I know. I I I think there's nothing wrong with him. I think a man should look, look generic, nondescript. Totally not like a homosexual or a coke dealer yeah you don't need to make sartorial choices at all you I, don't no. the, the woman should be making them for you there's that's right <laughs> this uh, here's the thing that really pisses me off girls when they're like looking for a boyfriend they're like well i want him to be like tall and smart and have a lot of money and also be stylish mm -hmm. and i'm like bitch like why do you want a stylish boyfriend get i don't want a like, stylish boyfriend at all i know get like a moderately more or less unstylish boyfriend and boyfriend and dress him to your specifications and desires men love that they love I mean, being yeah but you i'm don't... thinking about guys i know who have good style though they're all gay or rapists mm. <laughs> yeah yeah i'd say just keep it simple a button-down shirt goes a long way be make yourself a canvas so blank that anyone could project anything, anything that on they want you. onto you and that will people will be more drawn to you that way yeah get yourself you know a normal straight leg jean that's not too skinny around the ankle mm -hmm. uh don't wear any black button downs no unless you're like a noise musician or like mm -hmm. a berlin dj mm -hmm. uh stay away from you can go on etsy yeah. if the thrifting in your town isn't good and get some nice like ralph lauren button downs from the late 80s or early 90s yeah, but not too nice but not too like wall street you know yeah don't do any contrast collars just like nice my favorite thing to see on a man is like a threadbare button down shirt yeah that's a sexy look with like a normal pant or jean normal chino normal and a sneaker pant, maybe corduroys yeah. that could be a fun way to spice up your look yeah Those and like corduroys I Get like a, a Timberland boot on a man. That's a hot look for me personally. Yeah. Like maybe like a Carhartt jacket. I like I, I like when it veers a little bit working class, but not like too much. I do. I like preppy, obviously. Yeah, there's... Well, this is another one of those questions where he didn't furnish us with enough data because uh -huh. I kind of need to know what he looks like. Is he a blonde? Is he a brunette? What's his build? What's his height? Because yeah. there are like, you know, you can play to type. Go on. I would say... Go on Nordstrom Rack or Saks Off Fifth or all mm -hmm. those kind of like off-brand okay. diffusion retailers and look around there. Uh, theory is always good for men. Very simple, kind of mm. boring basics. Yeah, You will end up looking like an IT guy, but like an IT guy from a movie about hackers set in the 90s. Mm -hmm. So that's fine. Maybe a cable knit crew neck. Don't do V-necks ever basically right? yeah you're right i don't like v-necks unless you pair them with like collared shirt underneath and do that kind of thing yeah that's good but advice. never a v-neck on its own never a v-neck that's not a sweater a hood don't wear a hoodie if you can help it you know that's yeah women don't like that um <laughs> it makes you look too much like a then you invader like, like mark zuckerberg invader, yeah, or, or a silicon valley guy <laughs> Yeah, don't, yeah, and don't try and dress fucking funny. Just don't, don't do it. Don't wear an ironic shirt. Like, don't do, you I know. love pizza. I heart pizza. Yeah. Don't, you don't need to express yourself too much. I got my hopes up with this question because it, the subject is not dressing like a baby gap mannequin. And I thought this was going to be about infantilizing women's wear, which we love. Mm. But yeah. Right. Where do we get our baby clothes? <laughs> <laughs> you're probably i don't know i guess the the last word is you're probably fine the way you are um 
you should probably go to the gym and make sure that you have like a really hot body underneath the clothing because mm-hmm. that's what really counts. Yeah. And that's what the ladies love. Totally. Okay. Anyway. Would you prefer a man that gives you head and is bad at it or a man who never gives you head because he's bad at it? Parentheses. You are not aware that he is bad at it. You just know he's never done it for you. <laughs> okay. Uh, would you rather have bad head or no head, basically, yeah. is an easier way of saying that. I'm like the math lady right now. I'm like, um, whoa, whoa, no, I'd can you have head no. master's house tools? What? I'd rather have no head. That easy. Than bad head? I would rather have bad head because you could at least try to teach him and then if you if he's unteachable and you can break up with his ass. Mm. Yeah. I've been with guys who don't eat pussy and that's the most disgusting, weak, selfish type of man that you like men should be falling over themselves to eat you out. Wow. (laughs) I have occasionally, but never maybe anyone I've been with seriously, I guess. Yeah. it's shocking every time it happens like when a guy's just like not that into it you're like so uh are you like gay or just really mean or mm. what yeah it's but bad okay let's say it's bad and like irreparable would you rather i'd rather just skip it and do some fingering or whatever yeah maybe i don't know then like have like oh you know i don't know when it's bad it's bad I mean, it seems like there would be nothing worse than a guy who gave you... You always just sit on his face. Yeah, and just usually mash get, it in. Yeah. usually just gets... The, <laughs> takes care of that. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, if it's that bad and he insists on it, uh, I can think of no worse scenario than that. Right. Like a guy who sucks Ooh, at it, fuck. but but is really excited about it. Yeah. I don't know if that exists, actually, but... It exists. It definitely exists. I don't know. I vote option number one. Dasha votes option number two. I'm saying two. just no. I'd rather just not do it if he's bad at it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, agree to, <laughs> to disagree. There you, yeah. Yeah. There you go. Um, um, all right. Hi, Dasha and Anna. I was secretly lo- in love with my thesis advisor for two years and then decided to switch programs so I wouldn't have to be tormented by his brilliance, good hair anymore. After I commit to leaving, he and I get drunk together at a conference, confess our mutual love, and cheat on his wife together for four months. He's got a kid and divorce paperwork. He's 17 years older than me. We're still in the same small academic field, and he wants to try to make it work, i.e., e.g. spouse will hire a white picket fence, I'm a stepmom, etc., etc. Is it a bad idea to continue dating long distance while I finish my PhD? Feels like if we go public, my career is shot, and if we end things, he can end my future in academia on his own anyway. There's a lot more here. My guilt, questions about favorable treatment, distance, his baby, but I'm trying to keep this short. Anyway, it's thematically appropriate because Twitter has a lot of opinions about whether profs should date their students. Here I am, a giant fucking meme, and I need your advice on how to get out of this. Hmm. She she does want to get out of it. Um, I think it wasn't clear from what she said. I think but she's unclear. She's undecided. Is it a bad idea to continue dating long distance while I finish your PhD? I want to so know. She switched programs to get away from from uh, being in like this in close proximity with this guy. Mm-hmm. I want to know if he really has divorce paperwork or if he's just telling her that. Has she seen it with her own eyes? I mean, if he seems like he wants to commit to her in a real way. Yeah, but men love to say that to their gumars. They're like, believe me, I'm leaving her. I'm leaving my wife. They do it all the time. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. You're in a, You're kind of in a jam, huh? Well, I would give it a shot. I would like... If you think your career would really be over if it came out, don't professors, professors date students all the time. Well, this is a very confusing question because she, uh, you know, on one hand, it's a very bipolar question because on one hand, she's saying that she really loves him and he loves her and they have this bond and he's promising to leave his wife. But on the other hand, she's uh, worried that he might end her career Mm -hmm. or that she won't have a career anyway, which is a bizarre thing to think about somebody who you're supposedly in love with. So I'm trying to figure out which one it is. Right. Like, you know, again, the, my advice is contingent on the data. If he, 
if you really love this guy then give it a shot why not yeah um if you're scared to leave the relationship because you're afraid that you're not going to able to hack it without him and or he might uh seek revenge and ruin your career then you have to find a way to get out of it yeah and you gotta like you'll land on your feet it's yeah. gonna work out sweetie yeah no if you th- if you think he is like a manipulative person then you shouldn't be with him and you should find your way out of it exactly yeah and by the way there has been a lot of stuff on twitter about uh professors dating their students heidi matthews got quite a little a lot of flack for that tweet where she said she had kind of a a beautiful informative experience Mm -hmm. with her professor when she was 17 and he was 35 was that the correct age i think she might have been 19 19 um and i totally see a scenario where that's possible even if even if you uh kind of acknowledge that there might be an imbalanced dynamic all sexual attraction is basically about some dynamic imbalance exactly and like academia is such a thing it's like i mean it's almost like something like the arts (laughs) where there are close quarters and it's it's like directors shouldn't fuck their actresses it's like well they're going they're going going to honey it doesn't matter um who was it one of the talia's one of those stupid bitches on twitter i quote tweeted it yeah meant talia lavin men in their mid-30s who only date chicks in their early 20s lack confidence in their own masculinity appeal and personality no they don't they're no, they rich don't. they're rich <laughs> or they're hot or yeah. they're both or they're cool or by the way i'm a woman in her mid-30s at this point if men who are my age want to date women who are like 22 23 25 i don't give a shit it's their prerogative That's so fine yeah Wait, you want to date some hot 23 year old because you're like some rich industry jew by all means knock yourself out god talia's just mad because she's <coughs> overweight and i say this i say this with no disrespect that was what my no disrespect tweet was about that i got into a lot of trouble <laughs> for i say this with no actual uh ill will vindictiveness disrespect i've been chubby before i was bitter and angry when i was chubby because guys were less interested in me you were chubby i was chubby i've I seen the on, pics i've packed on so much weight because i was in a shitty relationship with a guy who didn't eat pussy i'm like letting it all wow hang out. yes letting it all hang out woo and <laughs> and I, I didn't like him and he didn't like me and i was miserable and chubby and Mm-hmm. then i like had some self-discipline to take care of myself and get in shape and it's been great ever since no complaints yeah because i'm guessing she's in That's her inspiring. 30s yeah well, women who aren't attractive love to complain about guys dating younger women yeah and, and here's the thing it's like sh- she thinks that guys aren't interested in her because she's too old they're not interested in her because she looks like she doesn't take care of herself well she won't even admit that that's what she's actually thinking it's like she's saying that guys aren't interested in her because she threatens their masculinity because no, it's she's because not she carries naive. herself in a way that's unattractive to them yeah which she can change by exercising a little bit of self-respect and self-discipline. And I say that with no acrimony. Like, seriously, I yeah. say that with full sympathy for girls like that. Because I've been there, honey. Like, and, it's so obvious. And girls in their 20s aren't, like, naive. They yeah. gain... Do you know what mutually beneficial relationships are? <laughs> yeah, I would say girls There's in their 20s... There's a trade-off that you get from... You can trade on your youth to get access to um resources and yeah and that doesn't make you can still also have a really like a emotionally intellectually stimulating relationship with that is still happens to be mutually beneficial all relationships should be mutually beneficial yeah they should be on some level and also i would say like girls in their 20s are probably more sophisticated than ever because of like the internet and like Mm -hmm. the information flows whatever i have a friend um, who has a who's in his thirties? Who has a girlfriend who's twenty one? Mm-hmm. Who is fantastic? She's so I love being around her. She's super precocious. If that's not a patronizing word, I don't mean for it to be. She's great. They have a great relationship. They like help each other creatively, emotionally. Yeah, and is there some- the happiest I've ever seen him? Yeah, maybe I don't know. He's not the most 
emotionally mature person, but he's yeah. not the, you know, who cares? That's what but we're talking about relationships between two people, essentially, neither of whom is perfectly psychologically or emotionally who is intact but who is and like maybe there's a paternalistic relationship between a younger woman and an older man but that's mm-hmm. so hot yeah all women we want should, that. i should be so lucky yeah everybody wants a daddy mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway i know i do i'm sorry to I go need, off on yeah. that tangent but i feel like yeah. i have to clarify my remarks because everything that i say is truly like out of sympathy and compassion for people who are frustrated and suffering and don't know why and like take it out on others anyway if any older men want to date me i'm i'm interested huh huh <laughs> i said no, if any older no, if, guys want to take me out i don't know slide into my dms yeah slide into those dms <laughs> god next one next yeah i think it's your turn um should I move in with my boyfriend? He lives in Dimes Square, bleep, um, which is convenient for me, and I love him. We live very different lifestyles, though. Mm. No, I say no. No, don't do it. Cohabitation is a hell of a. It's a great way to ruin your relationship. I think that cohabitation wait, yeah. is for people who know for sure that they want to get married and have a child then it starts to make sense. I would also suggest not moving in with someone and finding a place together so that you're more... That's smart, Dasha. That there's more, like, equity in. Because you might... You can move in with someone and you can feel like you're never really have any stake in that space. Yes, it comes with its own pre-existing baggage. And it's like a bachelor pad or, like, a little princess, pita tear or whatever. And that's very difficult it's a very unappetizing proposition if you do make the decision to move in together i would highly recommend finding your own apartment though she does say that he lives in dime square which is a very scarce and covetable area you can find a place in dime square yeah that's true you Uh. can like do like a little dime square apartment swap and also i would i would um encourage you to uh interrogate whether or not you actually love him which sounds like a really harsh thing to say but i always think of that whenever i'm ready to take like a serious step with a man yeah because sometimes you realize that you're doing it out of kind of convenience or fear fear, yeah yeah, right um the only guy that i've ever lived with we moved in together when we were really young because of kind of we th- we were very much in love whatever but i think that there was a lot of like financial precarity going on and it ended no, up being huge. not the best decision in new york especially you know i think if you can't afford not to move in with your boyfriend don't do it yes yeah hey anna and dasha i'm a straight guy and last summer while traveling in europe i went to a brothel i don't usually have trouble meeting girls but i was horny and curious so i decided to go for it I fucked two very hot prostitutes and had a great time. Sometimes I wonder if there's something kind of morally compromising about it, though. Prostitution is legal and well-regulated where I was, and the girls I talked to said they'd rather be there than in some shitty minimum wage job. I don't feel particularly guilty, but I don't know if it's something I would tell a future girlfriend about either. Anyway, it would be great to hear your takes on this and on prostitution in general. Thanks a lot. Love the show. Okay, John. (laughs) John. (laughs) Um, John. What do you think, Anna? Um, I want to know when he asked the girls about yeah, whether they like... after he busted. Yeah, was he like pounding them out? He was like watching one of them eat the other one's ass and he was like, so girls, would you prefer this to working at Chick-fil-A? Or? My uh, understanding is that... I don't know. Do you know anyone else who's had sex with a prostitute? Well accidentally our mutual besides yourself what? well no not me but no, i mean besides our, the man who have m- fucked you mutual yes i'm yeah. calling you a prostitute yeah. i mean <laughs> i have literally probably been prostituted um but um well adam told us the story about getting the, jacked off by the at the massage parlor yeah well that's but that wasn't really... he was like 18 mm, no right he was, he was like on study abroad 
like, oh no, in Israel he yeah. got a oh, blowjob. He yeah, got a condom okay. blowjob from. It's really not my story to tell. Um, well, I only bring it up because he told it on this pod. Before. Yeah. So, um, um, and I was as someone's girlfriend. Okay. Yeah, this question's complicated because I have well, I have complicated feelings about sex work in general. Um, and I don't think there's. I think that it sounds like he had a nice time, and I don't think he should feel morally compromised. But as someone, a, the girlfriend of someone who has um, patronized a couple ex now ex girlfriend who's patronized a couple sex workers, um, it did bother me, and I would bully him about it. On what level did it bother you? Uh, it, it just, I don't know. Just not the Israel stuff so much, more the hand job stuff. Right. But that's because that those women who jack off guys at massage parlors are like slaves. Right. You know? I know, but that's sort of like which is very different from what this guy did and you're in Europe. <laughs> right. He was just, what do you think, sister? You've been raped many times. <laughs> um but yeah, I I think instinctively and I can't exactly articulate why I would feel uncomfortable if a man told me that he had uh patronized like a brothel so i think i would maybe keep that to myself with future girlfriends i don't think that's something that you need to disclose but i was seeing a guy casually who had sex with a prostitute in amsterdam and he was very open about it not while we were dating like you know at an anna you can't touch the mic sorry (laughs) (laughs) um and it didn't bother me and i thought it it made him kind of interesting okay it intrigued me like i was like oh you know and he was very open about like he was really lonely and horny and wanted to fuck and he was in amsterdam but the way he described it to me was that there was very little skin to skin contact okay it is he sort of had a kind of alienating time doing it right so maybe if he like was more enthusiastic and like yeah i love to fuck whores i'd be like oh no (laughs) yeah Ah. but I don't know. It seems okay. It seems fine. I mean, he says that I he think was it curious. Kind of hot to me, even. Yeah, you know. like the thought of it. But he says he's curious, not that he's like made a habit of it. I think if somebody, yeah, right, does it habitually, it's weird and they have a problem. Sure, but yeah, uh, but uh, I think yeah, I think that patronizing a sex worker who is in a place where it's regulated and, and compensated and compensated is fine. is fine yeah i think like prostitution All this pr- is here to stay in the world yeah mm-hmm. and it's, it's like all kinds of you know it's is it exploitative yeah but, but like job every it? form of labor yeah. is you know it's like if you're going to feel morally compromised by sleeping with a prostitute you should be like feel morally compromised getting a pedicure yeah or eating bacon or any number of things or buying fast fashion anything yeah you should there is no ethical consumption yeah, using an iphone <laughs> exactly consumption of pussy or anything else <laughs> so don't beat yourself up too, too much, much just about don't it. don't offer up the information to your girlfriends either in- necessarily you know, unless they're unless it's like it's deep into your relationship and you guys are so close and she's like have you ever had sex with a prostitute and you seem it seems like it's not going to repulse her then go ahead and tell her i don't know Mm -hmm. some chicks Mm -hmm. got an open mind yeah okay next one is it your turn or mine i think it's your turn okay i'm writing to ask you a question that combines two interests pertinent to the red scare universe being a lesbian gym thought and online pornography Last week, I went to a fitness class and met a girl who looked familiar. At first, I thought maybe I knew her from the local queer scene, but about five minutes later, it dawned on me I recognized her from Pornhub. She did a handful of professional videos and then quickly retired, but her work is something I, ahem, come back to often. After class, I chatted her up and she asked me for my number. We're going on a date at the end of the week. My question for the pod, is it ethical to go on this date if I'm mostly just hoping to see some big naturals from the internet? I'm trying to parse out if being a fan of her porn career creates an evil power dynamic or if our meeting is just a fortunate coincidence. See you in hell. Mm, No. I mean, tell her you know that she's... When you go out with her, tell her that you know she's a porn star. Yeah. Like, just be transparent. Disclose that you have fapped to her videos. Yeah. 
but there's nothing wrong with it. She asked for your number. Yeah. And I don't think it creates going on a date with this girl creates an evil power dynamic because she retired and you consensually agreed to go on a date. It's fine. I don't see the problem. I don't see a problem. Yeah. Porn stars. Is the problem you think that you you don't have to date too? Because you're not interested in her as a person and are just sort of fetishizing her as this uh yeah maybe already that's... objectified thing but that's fine but maybe you'll be pleasantly surprised and she'll be a cool and interesting person that's what going on a date is yeah you don't sometimes you go on a date because you want to fuck and the person isn't like a fully fleshed out person for you and you're just kind of interested in yeah getting it in or you know um and that's whatever that's fine that's just contemporary yeah just sexual life I thought this question would be much tell, more interesting to answer, but it's actually pretty but just straightforward. Tell her, but just do tell her that you are, you know, don't be like, so what do you do? Like, you know, it's like we may, I mentioned this on a recent episode too, but like if someone went on a date with me and didn't mention that they listened to my podcast, that would be, that would be evil. Creepy. Creepy and evil. Creepy. And like, I would just, you should be on the same page. Yeah, so like about the knowledge that you have. Do about us someone. a favor if you see us out and about in Dime Square, and you, you know that we know that you listen to the <laughs> podcast. Just p- please be honest about it. It's not weird or embarrassing. It's totally normal. It's much more weird and embarrassing to not mention it. Yeah. Um, all right, next. Hi, girls. I'm a hostess at a restaurant, and I was fucking a bar back, but then my jealous BPD ass made him stop talking to me, and now he's noticeably hanging around other female coworkers when I'm there. Ooh. How do I get my revenge? <laughs> well, that's your BPD talking. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to get revenge. Um, you need to... Well, I mean, no. You will get revenge. Best revenge life well lived yeah so move on ice him out you need to be you have to you have to be this a perfect synthesis of like cruel and charming so that he feels drawn to you but then also like you're withholding from him yeah intimidated yes and that will i mean maybe it won't amount to revenge necessarily I don't think you have to get revenge against a guy who did nothing wrong because you gave mm-hmm. him the signal that you weren't interested and he started talking to other women in a closed, in kind of closed well, she quarters. she didn't give him the signal that she was interested. She said that... She made him stop talking to her. No, he oh. stopped talking to her. Her BPD well, she made says, him stop talking to her is what she My she's jealous BPD ass made him stop talking to me. What so she, she no, was what being... What she's saying is she was being jealous and borderline and, and alienated him and oh, now and he, he won't talk talking to, her. to her. Yeah. That's what she's saying. Okay. Um, and now he's... They're in a close working environment and he's flirting with other broads. I see. And as, you know, your jealous BPD ass is probably um, <laughs> spiraling. But you have to just pull yourself... You have to just pull yourself pull together. Pull yourself together. Pull yourself together. <laughs> and snare another man don't relinquish your power don't yeah you don't don't, have don't to, do it don't because you're only gonna end up embarrassing yourself as someone who's embarrassed myself plenty who loves to raise the stakes in yeah. a humiliating display don't do it not at work just don't do it find another job yeah it's not worth it get you're yourself hostess. fired that's the best revenge. you're a hostess you can get another job okay where mm. are we now I have a weird relationship with a cam girl. We have known each other for about two years and we talk almost every day. She told me she loved me before I ever told her, but the interesting thing is that she is Polly and has a boyfriend. She also has BPD. Another one. And there was a period where she was crazy in love with me. I suspect it was her BPD acting up because now it seems more relaxed and normal. We have met up too, but never hooked up, even though she told me she has hooked up with several other fans. Recently got pregnant with her boyfriend and I feel like I've missed any opportunity I had to bang. Should I wait it out and try to fuck after she has a kid or just cut my losses and ghost? Uh, in total, I've probably sent her $3,000. Uh, dude, get a life and get out of there. There's no losses to cut. You're not paying her to eventually be your girlfriend. You're paying yeah. her for a camming service that she was providing you. Yeah, And... It's a fair yeah. and square transaction. Exactly. It's like, you know, There's no, I went to Starbucks and got a PCCB. Yes. If it gives me IBS later, I made that bed and I lie in it. And There's fill no, it like, with diarrhea. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> I hate toilet humor. Yeah, too, no, there's the no, worst. there's no losses to cut. You that money is like hers. gone. It's hers. You weren't. It wasn't an investment in a relationship. It was a payment that you provided her for a service that she provided. That she for rightfully you. earned. Yeah, and yeah, get the fuck out of there. What are you talking about? Stick around and wait for her to have a kid with her poly boyfriend. You're gonna mentally l- ill cam girl. Like, yeah, no, you're God, gonna hang no. around with your dick in your hands for nine months for a polyamorous cam girl with, with a, bpd with bpd who fucks her fans and is pregnant with her poly boyfriend's she, baby this sounds like the opposite of attractive i don't care how hot this girl about? is why would anybody want that men really love men getting their dicks cut off they're so retarded men love to be punished and tormented by chaotic whores yeah that's true that's beautiful they do shakespeare <laughs> said shakespeare (laughs) they really do so you know what the heart wants what it wants but my advice the heart wants what the dick wants basically but get out of there it's yeah it's not a weird relationship dude it's It's a totally normal transaction she probably has a lot of relationships with a lot of like this. yeah because that is her livelihood um all right next uh, is eroticism based more in shame or is or in something that you don't have what is your interpretation of this question anna because um is it based in shame yeah like uh the kind of the right. taboo of objection. getting caught objection or in a lack that you don't have like you're searching for kind of uh, an opposite to track type scenario oh. because you're looking to fill a void uh. a lack um both can't it be both i mean eroticism is multifaceted yeah i guess which is it more it's like a diamond it depends it's also subjective you know yeah to me it's shame is a big part of it yeah like how so like well feeling ashamed about being horny Uh uh-huh and then becoming more horny Uh uh-huh and just a you know general kind of like how ab- the object is erotic you know yeah i i think eroticism for me is based in abjection not necessarily in shame but what's but in in, in doing like increasingly disgusting novel things that m- but may they're only disgusting because they because have a taboo around an element them, yeah. of shame about but i think i like, think horniness is a disease it is yeah but with with um mm-hmm it's a disease I don't want to care for. Um, but with like kind of I- increasingly abject scenarios, the shame has been neutralized because we've all watched so many like hours, minutes of porn. It's not like, not for me. I don't know. It's like, I don't, yeah, I don't know about you, but I don't feel any kind of acute, intense shame about your sexuality, about my sexuality. Oh yeah. I really do. Eroticism for me, I, I can only speak for myself is, um, based in some incest fantasy of fucking someone like myself not necessarily who resembles me but who is, has some kind of shared experience right yeah and reaching kind of higher levels of depravity <laughs> and objection yeah i mean it's eroticism for me is also very much about language yeah um and sort of stimulating myself psychologically yeah via turns of phrase i love my favorite thing is when someone says something weird during yeah sex. that's something hot. truly like inspired we have a dirty talk question that somebody asked oh, yeah. i don't know if we start it but we can probably Let's, expound more on that yeah um we'll find it yeah i don't know i mean i think eroticism is something different for everyone it's subjective mm-hmm but that shame is certainly an element, as is yeah. lack. I, we, I will say... Is about, desire is about lack. We know that. Yes, the kind of unattainable object, whatever. I would say that, you know, on the flip side, the worst thing that we constantly criticize about, like, liberal culture is the need, the sex-positive need to make everything kind of not shameful, exactly. to disclose, to talk mm-hmm. about everything. Um, and I feel like the initial disclosure happened in the 60s with the sexual revolution. Which we now know is a big mistake. Big mistake. And we're aware of it now. So let's not do any more talking and just like 
get down to the fucking i don't know <laughs> i found the uh, the question should we just do this yeah one? um what are your go-to dirty talk phrases calling myself a slut isn't really doing it for me anymore what's the best dating app for hot girls is the second part of the question tinder too many uglies and bumble and hinge seems desperate so let's tackle this first one yeah what are your go-to dirty talk phrases anna <laughs> my go-to dar- yeah. dirty talk phrases well the reason i only date capricorns is because they like to like choke you and make you call them daddy which is hot and then mm-hmm. you just respond yes daddy that really does it for me generally just like classic yeah very yes, classic daddy. simple yeah and daddy's little girl sort yeah, of scenario I'm a little girl yeah yeah oh i'm s- yeah Ooh. <laughs> i'm little and i'm a whore and for sure yeah I like i'm to, simultaneously innocent and little and also a disgusting little cum slut i that's um, basically the tension that's what we're yeah yeah we are, what we're interrogating when we we're heteronormative we have, here we're we couldn't be more heteronormative um i took one of those like bdsm index quizzes mm. that like breaks down like all of the various aspects of like um you know bdsm mm-hmm. and then gives you like a percentage and the one i know i know this about myself i didn't have to take this quiz but i'm i like to do kind of like brat play you know not like i'm not like merely submissive mm-hmm. i'm like a very disobedient bratty girl mm-hmm. who has to be punished right with sex yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know but i'm kind of like yeah it's just i I enjoy the playfulness of like, yeah, like being kind of like a stupid little bitch. (laughs) I weirdly also kind of like when people call me stupid. Yeah, sure. I don't know. Yeah. Not like all, not a ton. It depends on the person. But yeah, I had. had, Well, yeah, it depends on the person. It really depends on what the other person likes i yeah i just want to have i just want us both to be having fun to be like associating freely saying you know what we feel in an inspired and creative way the more creative the better yeah and then of course come inside me and stuff and get me pregnant yeah those are that's the get me pregnant yeah because i'm so bad (laughs) oh god now I'm horny. I know. I have. Oof. Never mind. What? No, I just haven't really been sexually active. Yeah, you were post horny a couple of months ago. I this was. is the thing; it goes in cycles. But um. Anyway, I I don't think we can tell you what your preferred dirty talk mode. They want to know That's, what ours is. Yeah, and yours is straightforward. I also, this is no secret that I really like role playing. Yeah. And putting on little outfits. Yeah. And doing, I really like to do a thing where I'm a cheerleader. I'm a cheerleader and I'm smoking weed. <laughs> You're like behind the bleachers and you skip I'm practice. I'm like smoking weed and like my professor, I like either my, like the teacher catches me, classic, or I'm a cheerleader and like there's some loser, nerd, school shooter maybe who I like sexually intimidate into, you know, (laughs) you know what I mean? And he's like nervous. He's like horny, but he's nervous. And I'm like, Oh yeah. Like, do you want to, Oh yeah. Are you getting hard? You fucking loser. Do you want me to come? You fucking loser. Like that's cool to me too. Just else, you know, I'm not a straightforward submissive. sub. I like the back and forth. I like the, the playfulness of power dynamics shifting and stuff like that you like to uh dom somebody into doming you in a way yeah a little bit of topping and i like to throw the k word out sometimes kike (laughs) yes oh cool (laughs) which like fuck me you dumb kike (laughs) i mean yeah i had i mean i've had like a a brief sexual relationship with a jewish a jewish guy and we 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 got really into like shiksa play oh wow 
you know, where he was like, oh, you're like such a shick, like beautiful shick son. I'm just like a horny, like nevish Jew. Like, Disgusting oh goat. Like, um, <laughs> shackle <laughs> counting. <laughs> uh, listen, I have a hood pass. And then princess play. I'm sorry. I'm not. I get, I'm getting too horny. I'm going to stop talking. The second part of the question, what's the best dating app for hot girls? There, there aren't any. Maybe Raya. I don't know. I'm not mm. on dating apps. I mean, Tinder's really just kind of Raya's gross. Because it's full of creatives. Um, Bumble and Hinge or just just stick with Tinder. If you're going to do it, there's no good app for hot girls. But Tinder is your kind of your best option. Yeah. Because it's a universal. You'll have access to a bigger pool of different kinds of people. There's definitely a lot of ugly people on it. But, you know, you can you'll stand out. Yeah. Huh. Well, look, I've always wanted to be a madam like in a brothel yeah so maybe i'll start that up i'll screen the girls personally you know i'll have a, a panel of judges wait an app a, a prostitute app no just like a dating app i'll screen both oh, the girls and the guys so we'll yeah. make sure that everybody on the site is hot that's the red scare dime dating square app. dating app yeah <laughs> um all right where are we uh we are um catholic homosexual Dear Anna and Dasha, I'm a gay 23-year-old man who is nervous about my current and really first real relationship. It's going well personally and emotionally, but spiritually I'm having trouble reconciling my Catholic community with my Lutheran boyfriend, both because of faith and my church's conservative attitude. I don't want to find another community because I love the Latin Mass and hate liberal Christian wishy-washy values and lack of integrity, but the community I'm a part of has stern interpretations of sex that make me feel trapped. What advice would you give me in my dilemma and those trapped in a similar bind? It has been hard enough to accept God in my life and I can't abandon either love. Hmm. That's a good question. Um, God is infinitely merciful. You know? Um, I also, as someone who also enjoys the Latin Mass, I also have a hard time at the parish that I go to because mm -hmm. they do go very hard on the hell mm -hmm. stuff and the like how, and the sin stuff and the like, it's a sin not only to um, basically to not try and convert people to Catholicism and like tell your family or like your friends that they're living in sin and shit. And that doesn't land so great with me really. Um, because I don't think that I think God is infinitely merciful and he's certainly more merciful than I am, you know? And he, mm, no one knows, you know, but it doesn't sound like you're scared of going to hell. It sounds like you're scared of being ostracized by and society and community by yeah. his community. Yeah, exactly. I would say focus on your relationship because there's plenty of time yet for it to hit the fan. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it sounds like it's a relatively new relationship. And I yeah. think that you're proxying your anxieties about the relationship itself. Um, and the into nice a kind of like religious or spiritual conflict. And the best thing about, Catholicism I mean not the best there's a lot of good stuff about it um, but it, that it is you know it's a faith of, of mercy yeah and grace and like it's okay if you make a mistake because we're weak you know yeah totally we, we're weak and we're fallible and we're all like doing our best and it sounds like you um, that you are in a state of grace to me it sounds like you're coming at it from the right place. Guilt is also a big part of being Catholic. So mm. you just got to live with that. Yeah. <laughs> I know I do. <laughs> Next question. Um, my dilemma is this. I love huge built guys that look me in the eye when they fuck me like they want to kill me. But I find them to be boring outside of the bedroom and they're almost always conservative libertarian. Do built dom leftist men even exist? This you and is, me both, my friend. This is from a, tw a self-described twink. Twink, yeah. So this is a gay, gay you know question. where you feel, Do you know where you find built dom leftist men in Catholicism? That's, that's where they're at. <laughs> and I'm not even into religion, huh. so just saying. Wow. They must exist on the left. Yeah, but they, yeah. 
I and think, who are gay also yeah who are gay yeah i mean i think well i mean leftism is such a political movement for uh enfeebled weaklings by and large yeah. <laughs> uh, no i'm sorry it is the no, uh, yeah. there are very few men who are kind of like drawn to like agro nor like hyper normative masculinity that would be also drawn right. to a socialist political program and it's also like a unfortunately a type that is disappearing anyway yeah like less and less men are you know yeah um but this guy's gay he could you know there's lots of gay guys who are maybe political and invested in like yeah bulking up and being a top or whatever um it sounds like but to me it almost sounds like you part of your attraction to them is that they are that like they are libertarian yeah. like losers yeah that they're so like you're kind of like getting off on like being essentially um hate fucked by them because you know that they hate everything you stand for that's a good question to ask yourself um are you attracted to those guys like sheerly purely because of their looks and like sexual proclivities or do you like it that they silently judge you yeah because yeah. that's a big part of sexual which is attraction. okay yeah but yeah if you're looking for a leftist to be in a relationship with i don't know really what to tell you yeah i don't think you should choose your friends or uh sexual partners for their political beliefs it's like mm, a, not I a good know. idea I, I i would have a hard time dating someone who had well who's extremely a different, conservative yeah but like very different values for me but find someone apolitical that would be actually my recommendation yes, you don't have to yeah. be a leftist or a conservative they could just be some someone who doesn't give a fuck yeah that that's good advice yeah which is probably ideal anyway because people who like politics are um <laughs> annoying <laughs> annoying uh hey anna Dasha and Anna, I was going through my boyfriend's computer and I was shocked to find ABDL porn, adult baby diaper lovers. I love my boyfriend, but I feel way too awkward to confront him about this. I hate to kink shame, but I can't help being disgusted. He has never tried to act out this fetish IRL. Maybe it's just a porn thing. What to do? Hmm. Hmm. That is a weird kink to have. It would gross me out, for sure. Uh, But pornography isn't always about your desires maybe he's doing research for a documentary yeah maybe he's doing research give him the benefit of the doubt i mean pornography isn't you know you can that's that in that case it's something so specific that it is kind of like well he must actually like it yeah but like i you know people watch all sorts of things in porn that they don't necessarily at all want to practice in life yeah you know it's just um, this is a really stupid and funny thing to be into it's not like being into like yeah uh, like bdsm Diapers. or like i don't know yeah gang no, it's, bangs. Specific, it's like a it's, weird specific kind of embarrassing thing to be into um yeah. i think like you really also shouldn't confront him because you were going through his computer which you shouldn't have been doing in the first place oh i was gonna say that she should keep monitoring his activity to see if this is like was maybe a one-off kind of thing that he was curious about or maybe was watching for a number of reasons yeah and then also to stay vigilant and look for signs of like maybe there's some diapers around the house stuff like that yeah you know maybe just i'll wait i would wait it out interrogate your sex life a little more stick you know stick around you want to if you're going to ask him about it you're going to want to be really sure yeah that that's what what, what's going on that he's like consumed and obsessed by it (laughs) um okay (laughs) let's see um i have fucking genital herpes sorry damn hi ladies love the pod i'm a conventionally attractive gay male one on the binary and 23 on the (laughs) one to 30 scale Okay. okay Um, I don't even know what that is. It's the, the Patrice whatever scale. Um, I feel like I should be able to enter a meaningful relationship. But a few years ago, I was diagnosed with genital herpes. I was talking to a guy a few months ago that I really liked. And once I disclosed my status, he stopped talking to me. How should I go about navigating the dating scene with an STI that everyone treats like AIDS? Would love to hear what you think. Thanks. Hmm. Is herpes such a big deal? I'm confused. Well, herpes isn't a big deal. Um, <laughs> but you can't what is the rate of transmission of genital herpes with gay men 
I think it's low because with it's everybody past if you're on genitally. Yeah. Right. Right. But like gay guys do butt stuff. Yeah. Which isn't your genitals. You can get herpes like in your butt. <laughs> not in your butt, but you can get it anywhere like in the kind of genital <laughs> trough area. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um herpes isn't a big deal. I'm gonna say it yeah. on the record. It's you wait, Dasha, you go off and I'm gonna feed the cat because okay, she's like driving me nuts. Uh herpes is something that i mean some people have it worse than others i guess uh but it becomes less and less likely to have your outbreaks as as i understand become less and less frequent as more time passes uh and which makes it harder and harder to pass it on to people uh because you're only contagious if you're like actively having an outbreak right um and i know people who have herpes who have had it for years who basically never have outbreaks at this point yeah me too because they've had it for like a decade or something and like you know you can also go on you know val valtrex yeah valtrex i think that it's probably not a problem and this guy who stopped talking to you was probably kind of like, I mean, you you'll encounter yeah. that here and there, but I don't think it's like the consensus that men will flee from serious relationships with you because you have herpes. Yeah. Anyone and anyone who really likes you isn't going to care. It's not going to care. And like, you know, so many people have herpes. Yeah. Honestly. It's like, no, I would it's really not totally a date a person with herpes if I liked I them have. enough. I have. Yeah. It's like not, not a thing. And he disclosed to me and I, you know, like whatever i was like that's fine just that's like my dirty talk i'm like give me herpes I'm daddy. Like, let me know if you have an outbreak and you know let's just be careful i guess like roll the dice anyway Sorry, you got herpes it it's okay. sucks it's Don't. not the, it's not the best thing in the world but it's not the it's worst not thing AIDS. in the world it's and it's not, not gonna de- it will not define your dating life um next I'm going to jail soon for international cocaine trafficking and I was wondering if I should leave with that factoid when on first when I go on first dates in a few years or keep it a secret. Uh Yeah, dude, that's really hot. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Depends on the date, you know? If she seems like the kind of girl who'd like to hear something like that, then for sure tell her. But if she's a little straight laced, maybe wait a little bit. But no, you should you should tell people. It's part of your life. You went to jail. That's crazy. Yeah, it's like a big deal for international cocaine trafficking. Love after lockup, baby. Here's the thing. If I went to jail for like, uh, I don't know, sex trafficking or the mm-hmm. manslaughter child or child molestation <laughs> or child <laughs> pornography, I would not disclose that and I would be ashamed of that. But yeah. there's, there's no shame in trafficking drugs across national borders. <laughs> no shame at all. If a guy it's was cool. cool and hot and said that, to, if I liked a guy to begin with and he said that to me on a first date, I would probably suck him off. I'd be like, whoa, you like, went to jail? Yeah. Holy shit. What's your workout routine? You should get really ripped when you go to jail and read a lot of books, yeah. preferably the Quran and Rich Dad, Poor Dad and come <laughs> out of there like <laughs> really thugged out. You're going to want to really read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Um next one next one i gave the married guy i'm seeing an sti after vehemently insisting i didn't how do i move past this i feel disgusting and terrible lol mm, i'd like to know which sti to be yeah. honest that's a little bit pertinent but mm, i don't know pretend it didn't happen yeah if listen if it's like chlamydia or gonorrhea then who cares if it's herpes which i'm assuming it's herpes yeah. um that's a pretty shitty thing to do but he also had it coming because he was cheating, cheating on, his, on wife. his wife who you should be really worried about is his wife and or any kids that he may or may not have but what's done is done it's, it's not you just gotta you know what don't think about it yeah but, you guys did a bad thing don't do it again i know that's not the most like ethically sound advice but just practically just pretend it never happened <laughs> that's what i would do well yeah it depends on uh, what else are you gonna do you're gonna make amends with these people no yeah you're gonna sit them down and have a confrontation no that wouldn't help anyone. What's done is done. <laughs> no regrets. Hey, wanted to know your opinion on women who, quote, don't like other women and that keep saying it's because women have been terrible towards them. What do you guys think? Love and rose emojis, Suzanne. Uh, yeah, a lot of women don't like women. Uh, and women have probably been terrible to them because 
they're hostile towards them <laughs> yeah uh from the get-go i don't trust women who don't like women no way i don't either i don't trust girls who are guys girls or mm-hmm. whatever yeah just one of the guys i hate that yeah like eating like playing beer pong and like i don't know <laughs> i don't know eating hot dogs whatever those girls do yeah. um who try and act down to earth to get guys to fuck them <laughs> um, that's the worst just use your natural sexual attractiveness and feminine wiles to get guys to fuck you be a man about it mm-hmm. you don't have to like put on a flannel shirt and play beer pong with men to get them to fuck you if you do yeah. you're a loser <laughs> or a lesbian as you said which there's something no wrong. they're not lesbians because lesbians love they're women. fake lesbians yeah um um yeah god no i wouldn't trust someone who didn't have female friends honestly my relationships with women are some of my most they're yeah they're important ones. yeah i listen i i sometimes don't like women because i think that they act in a way that's like yeah i mean sure because but i'll tell you why because i i'm a woman so i understand the way that female psychology works mm-hmm. and i know i can see the bullshit that women but, are pulling from a mile away but you're not like other girls you're a misogynist yeah i know <laughs> um, but at the same time i love women god how can you hate like half of the population um right or i mean i think i hate women sort of generally like you know lib femmes yes sort I of hate, like i hate what modern feminism has taught women to be yes. i hate and i hate this false sisterhood that's based on like a, a fraudulent performative solidarity because right. you know that those women will throw each other under the bus mm-hmm. at a moment's notice for the most mediocre dumbass bullshit yeah. like a, a promotion at their shitty media publication or like some mid-market dick right so i yeah i, I hate the performance of sisterhood sure but as to true sisterhood that's a beautiful and wonderful thing absolutely that should be cherished god um of course so yeah i think we both probably don't yeah as i hate i would say i generally hate women but interpersonally on a want you know i actually love women i think they're better than men honestly yeah, I think men are just so stupid and disappointing on some level. Uh, women are smart. Women are men. uh smarter than men except for like the smartest men who are truly like this real. really yeah. <laughs> um, but the smartest man is smarter than the smartest woman, but women are more smarter yes, yes. than most men. Yeah. Is what I more smarter exactly. Dumb. And <laughs> the I mean look and and the thing is like I don't I mistrust kind of the uh cultural logic like the feminist like lib femme cultural logic that encourages women to be um catty and manipulative Mm -hmm. because there's like this whole thing in culture now that's like you go girl you get revenge yeah and i think like everybody men and women alike should should aspire to act (laughs) in the best most moral way possible because it reaps rewards in your private life and also possibly in your political life anyway last one that's yeah let's do the last one from uh, rachel uh love line q the possessive boyfriend one yeah oh should we do the porn wife Uh, one it's a little long we already did the porn thing okay and the dirty talk thing okay rachel oh shit i said her name that's okay i'll edit it first name um that's okay uh is who's reading you are okay as a woman, how do you get your long-term boyfriend to be romantic and possessive over you? More romantic and possessive over you. My current boyfriend is quite emotionally distant and indifferent. And the fact that we're long distance doesn't help telling him that I want him to be romantic and to show more affection towards me feels feeble and doesn't seem to work. I want him to show that he wants me, but I don't know how to make that happen. Is there a way to ensure that your boyfriend will keep pursuing you well into the relationship or is this Mm. chase something that naturally fizzles out over time and that I should just accept? Um, I think that he probably doesn't. Your boyfriend's possessive over you, Anna. Well, yeah, but that's because I wanted that, you know, and how did you get it? um you found a person who was i found a person who was naturally inclined to be possessive and then 
I lured him with uh, sex and also being chaotic. Yeah. Which men love. Yeah. Especially possessive guys. Yeah. The trick to, to being with a pos- like a romantic and possessive man, I think probably has to do with like sexual chemistry and charisma like mm-hmm. within the relationship yeah they're long distance though yeah so that's a problem yeah he seems like he's doesn't care he probably just doesn't care. i think he doesn't care i think you need to find a different boyfriend or who's maybe more, like, he does but your love languages aren't compatible yeah i don't you know and you are someone who really needs words of affirmation you know about the love languages Anna? no what is the there's five there's a quiz you can take um (laughs) so there's words of affirmation acts of service physical affection what's the other the other ones um oh quality time and the last one oh gifts give giving gifts Mm -hmm. so there's the those are the five say those again sorry i was okay i was zoning out there's gift giving Uh uh-huh Quality time, uh-huh. words of affirmation, uh-huh. physical intimacy, and acts of service. Okay. And you can take a little quiz and it'll tell you which ones are like the most meaningful. The most for meaningful you. for you. Yeah. Um, like some people it means a lot to them to receive thoughtful presents and mm-hmm. stuff. For me, that was the lowest one. Mm-hmm. My first mine is acts of service, not surprisingly. And really? then words of like affirmation. Mutual acts of service or what? No, I feel loved when someone does, does nice things for you. Nice things for me that alleviate many of the pressures that I have <laughs> as a dysfunctional um, artiste. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, like that really means a lot to me when someone like helps me function and does things for me that make my life easier. Mm-hmm. And that's how I feel cared for and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then words of affirmation are also really important. Once again, language. And then I think it was physical touch and then it was quality time and then it was um, gift giving. Okay. Wow. I should take this quiz. I don't, I actually legitimately don't know. You probably physical affection is probably big for you. Yeah. I think cause you're a very sexual person. I'm like, Oh God, I hate hearing that. About Sorry. Yeah. And then words of, aff- if I had to guess words. Yeah. Of yeah. I like the words of affirmation. And acts it's of nice. service are probably up there for yeah. you too. Cause you need your boyfriend to take you to the DMV just like I do. Yes. We're like similarly <laughs> retarded. I, it, it's very nice to receive gifts, especially thoughtful gifts, but it's not like something that I value like that highly. In yeah. The, in the kind of the totem pole of affirmative relations or whatever. Um, I think like, part again like the whole possessive tempestuous thing which is really hot and fun is hard to maintain in a relationship it takes work Mm -hmm. and it takes like going on dates and having lots of sex and having uh, a lot of combative physical altercations (laughs) that communicating but not too much yeah you know like having your own being your own person and not just kind of congealing into one like (laughs) yeah familiarity breeds contempt i do believe that yeah Um, so you don't want to live with somebody but you also don't want to live on a different continent as somebody exactly because it like both poles are not entirely great for the relationship sounds like your boyfriend just has a different you know i don't know we can't say that whether or not he cares about you maybe he just doesn't show that he cares in the way that you want and then in that case i don't know what to do for you yeah i mean it's like very frustrating and disappointing i was like i started watching curb Mm -hmm. and on that show one of the kind of uh narrative arcs is cheryl's gradual disappointment with larry who's Mm -hmm. like annoying and cheap and not romantic yeah and, and then the last get straw it. is when she calls him because she thinks she's about to be in a plane crash and he like is trying to fix his DVR or whatever. Yeah. And he like <laughs> doesn't care. He's attentive. But we know he loves Cheryl. Of course he loves Cheryl. Yeah, of course he does. Yeah. It's and it's just I, that Larry can't, you know? Yeah, they have a different love language. Exactly. So I feel like you have to interrogate the um, nature of the relationship. Be vocal and say what you want in a non pleading, non pathetic way. Yeah. And then make yourself less available to him. And he might actually get in line if he loves you and he fears losing you. Yeah. 
that's good advice is to instill a fear yeah you want to be a little bit challenging and intimidating yeah yeah and if he really you know it doesn't seem to be impacted by you being more withholding then he's not the guy for you does not give a shit yeah anyway is that that's it that's it yeah we can i think we're done here thanks you guys yeah we'll be lovely back. to check in with all the yeah the gays and the girls um we are going to try and do an episode remotely probably when i'm in switzerland mm-hmm. um but if not we're sorry we're trying but i'll be back not it's where it's gonna be okay <laughs> yeah it'll be fine uh, it won't be like last time it won't be like last time we're we're, we're trying we're trying yeah okay all right see we'll you see in you hell. <laughs>